Okay. Welcome to the Liver Rescue Detox Summit. I'm Sherry Lewis, your host, and today we have with us Katie Hadley. Katie is a functional medicine dietitian, health coach, and personal trainer. She witnessed firsthand the Band-Aid approach of healthcare in the U.S. as a, as a um, teen struggling with anxiety, depression, and chronic gut symptoms, and it almost cost her her life. After a suicide attempt at age 16, she was determined to find true healing for the body, mind, instead of just managing her symptoms. She studied nutrition, psychology, kinesiology, functional medicine to find these answers and founded Holistic Health and Wellness uh, to share them with others. She supports people all over the world in addressing the root cause of their gut symptoms naturally using her signature six pillar approach so they can live symptom free and thrive. Katie is also the co-founder of Pet and Parent Longevity, where she and her zoology partner provide education to 2.0 pet parents on how to create a longevity lifestyle so they can live younger, longer together. And there you go. Look at your cat there. Just loving right it. Right on cue. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> yes. Well, welcome, Katie. So I'm excited for you to share both sides of these stories for um, people's health and for your program with pets as well. I, I totally love the idea. So we'll dive into that in a little bit here. But let's start with let's start with where your story begins. Cause I think a lot of us who are in this field, we come from a background where our health was not where we wanted it to be. We knew it could be better and we weren't getting the answers in the traditional way. So we started down this whole new path, which led you on this amazing journey. So I would love to know a little bit more about that because you've, you've studied a lot of things with, um, in, quite a range between not just the nutrition, but the psychology side, which is such a huge part. And I feel like it's missed a lot. So I was excited to see that in there. Um, so tell us a little bit more. Yeah. Well, thank you Jerry, so much for having me today. I'm so excited to talk about all things gut health uh, and of course pets <laughs> as yes. well. So yeah, so my, you're, you're so right. That's I don't know that I've ever met anyone in the functional, holistic, alternative medicine or health space who hasn't come from it from their own experience. Because when you've been let, when you've been let down by a system and when you've suffered, mm -hmm. that lights a certain fire in you. And for me, it, it made me want to talk about it. So let's talk about it. So my health journey started at quite a young age. I had, like many kids, I had anxiety at a young age. But I also had a lot of gut problems and just constant stomach. And doctors told my parents, you know, she's young, she'll grow out of it. But the reality is I didn't grow out of it. And it actually got a lot worse. And not only did I have anxiety, I mean, I'm talking like early elementary school, but I started developing depression and um, I, I was getting sick a lot and no one really thought to connect these pieces. So there was this divide, right? I had my mental health mm -hmm. providers and I had my physical health providers. And no one was also looking at the root cause. No one was saying, well, she's so young. Why is she getting sick so much? Why does she have a stomach ache 24 seven? Why is she feeling depressed at 10 years old? Mm -hmm. And this sort of escalated and got worse and worse over the years. And like you mentioned, um, like you read in my bio at 16, I attempted suicide. And around that time, my therapist had said to me, you know, nutrition, what you eat can actually play a role in your mental health. And I thought, well, this is crazy because I've been dealing with this at this point. I mean, at 16, I'd already been dealing with it for so many years. It's like this, this guy has to be kind of woo woo, right? Obviously now we know it's not, but back then it, it wasn't talked about even as much as it is now. So it kind of led me down this path of saying, well, hold on a second. I've been told that my brain's broken. I've been told that my gut's broken. And I've been told this is how I'm going to live my whole life. And not someone else is kind of 
telling me that that's wrong. And I've always been a little bit of a rebel on the inside. So I was like, all right, well, let's dive into this. And I can't say that it was like, you know, this profound journey where all of a sudden I set my mind to, right? It was, it took a long time and it was really, really hard. But mm-hmm. like you mentioned, I have these degrees and, in, in you know, education, various backgrounds because I was looking for answers. Mm-hmm. I, I got into, I became a personal trainer first because of the role of exercise and mental health. And I saw that was helping. And of course, because of the mental health piece, I was studying psychology and this kind of evolved. And I became a health coach looking at sleep and stress. Then I studied nutrition, but at the end of the day, so I was a firm believer at that point that lifestyle plays a role in health, physical, mental, right? We can't disconnect the two. Mm -hmm. And while I was living a healthy lifestyle, you know, going into my early 20s, there was still something wrong with my gut. I was living a picture perfect healthy lifestyle and something was still wrong. And that's what drove me to functional medicine, which is really looking at what is the root cause Mm -hmm. and what had ended up happening was Um, I had had a a combination of different factors sort of wreck my gut. A lot of antibiotics as a kid, um, just various pieces that, that, that really decimated my gut health and the gut sends signals to the brain. So this is causing more depression, more inflammation, more anxiety. I'm getting sick more, right? Because 70% of the immune system is in the gut. So it wasn't until we were able to dive deep and really get to what was going on at the root. I had parasites, I had bacterial overgrowth, I had food sensitivities. I mean, and after 15 years of being told you're just going to live with it, I mean, my gosh, I was thrilled because that meant I could do something. And so now I come out from a perspective of lifestyle medicine and functional medicine combined. Mm-hmm. That. So- so that we can get to the root and then create a lifestyle that fosters wellness and keeps you healthy long term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. And you you said a couple of things that I'd like to come back, kind of circle back to is the antibiotics, symptoms, instead of going after symptoms, going after the root cause. Because I think in traditional ways, we're just kind of told, let's just see if we can prevent this, not not prevent it from happening, but from getting any worse. And it Mm -hmm. can get better. We can clean things out of our body, but the antibiotics. So I'd really like to come back to the antibiotics because I don't think people really understand how bad antibiotics are on our gut and the effects that they cause on us. Yes. And, you know, 20, 30 plus years ago, everyone and everyone was anyone and everyone all the time was getting antibiotics because Mm -hmm. they are so powerful, right? If you have an infection, it's like, boom, done. But now we're understanding that the, the gut microbiome is like a community. Mm -hmm. It's like a city is the analogy I always use. So we, we often hear that there are good bacteria and bad bacteria. And that's actually not how it works so much. It's really about how well is this community thriving? So in a Mm. healthy city, we want residential, we want businesses, we want grocery stores, and we want schools, and we want all of this diversity and variety, okay? This is like our healthy microbiome. And there's lots of different things in there, but they're all coexisting. Mm -hmm. Now, what can happen is, let's say we have a fire, and it wipes it out like an antibiotic. It comes in and it's not specific. It's not saying you're the bad guy. You're the bad guy. Let's take you out. It's saying we're wiping it all out. And so it's like a fire coming through our community. So not only can you see, okay, well now our community, there's not very much left. Not only is that going to be unhealthy, but what happens next is also detrimental. Mm -hmm. So not only does it take time for that community to rebuild, But I like to use the analogy, like a developer comes in. This is what we call opportunistic bacteria or pathogens. And they say, ah, well, there's some space here. We're going to buy it all up and we're going to overgrow. So we can get pathogenic bacteria, pathogenic yeast overgrowing because that community isn't keeping it in check. So for example, candida is a yeast. It's normal to have and totally okay to have a little bit of candida in your gut. But as soon as that community gets out of balance, it can skyrocket up and you can get symptoms all over, not just in your gut. You can get joint pain, you can get brain fog, you can get sugar cravings. I mean, it's really widespread. And so when we use prescription antibiotics, while they can absolutely save lives, 
we have to be really careful and mindful about how and when we're using them. And really, in my my opinion is look to other alternatives first. If it's a life or death situation, do what you got to do, right? But let's look to Absolutely. other alternatives first. Like herbal an- antimicrobials, herbals are incredible. Mm-hmm. They do what we call they modulate. So instead of coming in and just wiping out, we actually don't really understand the mechanisms, but they come in and they actually know how to kind of target specific bacteria in order to get that balance back in control. So it's a more gentle approach. So there are other alternatives. And of course, there are strategies you can use if you have to take antibiotics or have taken antibiotics to help mitigate some of that damage and help repair the gut. But I had taken so many antibiotics as a kid that this led to what we call dysbiosis, that imbalance in the bacteria, which has a serious downstream effect um, on so many different areas of gut health and functioning and detoxification. Right. Yeah. So true. And you, you just mentioned the downstream effect of everything. And I think that's another area that we, you know, in the traditional way, which it has its place, but one of the downsides that I see is that we think of things as taking care of just this area or that area rather than the whole And the comment that you just made about the downstream effect is so huge that we don't think about that because we've really been kind of trained not to. So would you speak a little bit more on that so that people can get the bigger picture of what really is going on behind the scenes? Yeah, I mean, you're so right. We think of things in silos. We think... Mm -hmm. This is my gut health. This is my mental health. This is my joint health. This is my liver health. And the reality is everything is so connected. And we often say in functional medicine that gut health is actually at the center of health because it's important for so much. Okay. So let's kind of dive into that. And I, I'm a total nerd, so I'll try not to get too nitty gritty and sciencey about this, but I think it's really important to understand the function of the gut because mm-hmm. Without understanding that, it's hard to under, it's, it's hard to grasp how it could possibly impact literally everything in your body. So the purpose of the gut, right? When we eat food, it's pretty obvious to most people, okay, well, we're digesting it, right? Like that's what the gut does. It's, it's so we can use food as energy. Mm-hmm. So it's not just about digestion. We have to take in food. Food is energy, but it's also information. It tells our body how to function. So when we take in food, we have to digest it. We have to break it into all those little tiny, tiny pieces. And then from there, we have to absorb it. Once we absorb it, then we can take it to where it needs to go, right? Because let's say, you know, you eat some rice. Like the rice doesn't literally go to your muscles. It has to be broken down, all of the carbohydrates, and then, you know, taken up and, and go to the rest of the body. So if either digestion or absorption isn't happening properly, that food can go through us without us being able to really utilize the nutrients. So we can be eating an amazing diet, which let's be honest, most Americans don't, but we, even if we are, we can be eating an amazing diet. And if we're not digesting and absorbing, our body actually isn't even able to use the nutrients that we're taking in. Well, if we're not able to take in those nutrients, literally everything's going to suffer because our brain needs nutrients, our our cells and literally every area of our body, all of our organs. So we can, it can lead to what we can call nutrient depletion or not, just not enough building blocks for our body to function. So that's one way. Another way is the fact that over 70% of our immune system is in the gut, which makes sense why when I was a kid, I was getting sick a lot. So then I was getting more antibiotics which then made my gut health worse. So then I got sick more and then given more antibiotic. And it was just this vicious cycle going around and around. So there's our immune system. So that's another way. But then also the gut and brain are connected innately by what's called the vagus nerve. So it's pretty obvious to most people that, okay, if, if something's going on psychologically, if I'm really upset or really nervous, right? Or excited, you can get butterflies in your stomach. You can get, right? You can feel it in your gut, right? A gut feeling. Mm-hmm. But what most people don't know is that the gut actually sends 10 times more signals to the brain than the brain is sending to the gut. So if the gut is out of balance, 
our mental well-being, our mood, all of that is also going to be affected. So there are so many ways that gut is really at the center of health. And when we have an imbalance, it can literally affect anything. And you can see symptoms of gut imbalances anywhere. It could be acne. It could be your fingernails are brittle and have spots. It could be your hair is thin, a uh, low energy, depression, joint pain. I mean, it's profound how much gut imbalances can manifest mm -hmm. even outside of your typical GI symptoms. Yes. And then on top of that, like, as you were mentioning, like all the different places we can feel it, we now are building up or not necessarily building up, but because things are wearing down now, when we do come in contact with some immune issue, our defenses are down, our suit of armor has holes in it, and now we become more vulnerable. So, um, so with that and the connection of everything else, you know, that the stomach is connected to, you mentioned things like the hair and the nails and stuff. And we also see that with the thyroid. So we can now see the connection between the gut and the thyroid and, and then um, some of these other things. So, um, so when we're looking at how all of this is connected together, what are some things like you, you mentioned some herbal things, but what are some other things we can do? And you, and you talked about diet, but lifestyle and even the emotional component of that, because that's, that's huge. You know, where, where our mind goes, our body follows. If we don't believe we can feel good, then we're not going to feel good. So the reverse is also true. So where do you see that fitting in with a person's program? Really good question. And before we dive in, I want to actually touch on something you just mentioned, which is the thyroid. Mm -hmm. So one other downstream consequence that I didn't mention and is really important is when the when the gut becomes permeable, is what we call it. When when the junction, so the the gut lining is made up of a single layer of cells and they kind of come together like this. And when there's dysbiosis or inflammation, a lot of different things can lead to this, but it can become leaky. So these, these what's like Velcro kind of becomes loose and we can actually get protein molecules going through the gut and entering the bloodstream. The body says, what the heck is this uh, attack, right? Because it's kind of a foreign invader. It shouldn't be in the bloodstream. And so it causes an immune response. Some of these molecules look like certain cells in our body. Mm -hmm. So this can lead to or contribute to autoimmunity. So Hashimoto's, which is a autoimmune thyroid condition, is in large part contributed to by gut health because those protein molecules, specifically proteins in gluten and in dairy products are getting through into the body and the body says, uh-oh, attack. And then it sees the thyroid as well and says, attack that. And so now we have an autoimmune response. So this is another area that not only does gut imbalance, you know, affect the gut, but we're now looking at other organs being impacted as well. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece that I want to tie in as well is this is the detoxification summit. What the heck does gut health have to do with detoxification? And a lot. A lot. So if the gut's out of balance, we actually cannot eliminate a lot of toxins and hormones. When we have bowel movements, we excrete toxins, we excrete hormones. And if that's not happening properly, so if we're constipated, or if we have certain types of imbalances in the gut, our body's actually recycling hormones like estrogen, which can contribute to estrogen dominance and things like really bad PMS and so forth. And then we can get recycling of, of toxins as well in our body. And so now we're not able to detoxify. So just had to put those couple pieces back in there because yeah, good. there are just so many aspects of this. Yeah. It's like a big puzzle and trying to make sure you have all of them in there, in their place so that the body functions well. So, and, and those are really very good points about that too, because, um, 
we don't necessarily always think about those things and and then um, the emotional side too is another area that we often don't think about and that's so huge for us as well so with your psychology background how do you use this to implement into what you do to help people get the bigger picture and get all of those pieces filled into their puzzle yeah so let's tie this into what you asked before which is well, what the heck can we do and like you meant like you're mentioning now the the psychology piece really does tie in so there are many different aspects within our lifestyle that affect gut health. Whether or not we are making conscious decisions to do something or something else, it's still impacting our gut health. Mm -hmm. So our choices affect it, but also our environment that we exist in. So I break it down into six different lifestyle pillars. And these are the six pillars that are essentially the pieces we can control. Remember I said, you know, when, when my therapist first told me about the role of nutrition and exercise, I felt so empowered because I felt like there's finally something I can do. And for most people that I work with, the, the folks that I work with are the people who have been told by conventional care for decades. There's nothing we can do. You're going to mm -hmm. have to live with your gut like it is. Mm -hmm. And first of all, that's just, that's BS. Like, it's just, just because you haven't found the root cause doesn't mean that it's not there, right? Some right. things cause the symptoms, so we have to find it. But there's also, again, so much that you can control. So nutrition is one piece. And I'm really a proponent of individualized nutrition. There is a lot of noise right now in the media saying this is the best diet or that's the best diet. And the reality is, is everyone is different. Yes, there are foundational pieces that we know are essential for a long, healthy life, right? But within that, each person is going to be unique. For example, if you have, you know, Hashimoto's, including dairy and gluten in your diet, it might not be a good idea. Whereas for someone else, those foods are perfectly fine and sit well with their body. So you have to think about what does your body need, but also what do you enjoy eating, right? Because if you don't enjoy eating, what whatever kind of diet or meal plan or whatever it is you're trying to stick to it's not going to be sustainable and it's also not going to be enjoyable right so right. we have to bring that component back into food and say what is the best nutrition for you for your body because food is it's energy it's information it's community it's culture sometimes it's comfort and all of these things are fine and healthy and when we try to restrict and we come from a place of don't eat this and don't eat that we can really not only damage our body by not taking in enough nutrients but also damage our relationship with food and our own body image so we have to acknowledge the role of of our mental health when it comes to how we eat and what we eat. So nutrition is very much one of those key lifestyle pillars. Mm. The next lifestyle pillar is sleep. So believe it or not, sleep actually plays a role in gut health. So our body has a 24 hour circadian rhythm. And during times of, which is just a fancy way of saying a sleep-wake cycle, but our organs and our cells have this too. And it's really essential that we have periods of wake and doing things because of certain processes. And then it's really important to have periods of rest because that's something else. And those periods of rest and sleep are essential for gut health. So when I see folks who are walking around on five, six hours of sleep a night, sometimes less, we have to... Take a look at that and, and really see, is there something we can do here to improve not only your, your quantity of sleep for your gut health, but also your quality of sleep? Mm -hmm. Because I know that people too. And these two go hand in hand as well, because if your gut is out of balance, sometimes that can kind of contribute to um, low energy, trouble sleeping and, and so forth. So we have individualized nutrition, we have optimizing our sleep and our circadian rhythm. Then we have movement. Yeah. Exercise mm -hmm. or lack thereof also plays a role in gut health. But it's both extremes that can be detrimental. So being sedentary, not getting enough movement during the day 
can really harm our gut. Also, extreme sports where we're, you know, doing right. endurance, um, you know, running or triathlons for long periods of time can actually contribute to leaky gut, which I talked about before. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure there's that happy medium in between. And, you know, as I'm talking about the, the six pillars as they relate to gut health, this is literally for every part of health. It's not just relevant for gut health. It's relevant for brain health, for mental yeah. health, for right? Like literally detoxification for literally everything. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So we, it's just, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you saying? Well, I was just going to say that, um, the, when you were talking about eating the comments that you made about the attitude and everything, I was just reading how it's good to make sure that we are, you know, maybe pray over your food, bless your food, um, do have a good conversation, but never do negative things because mm -hmm. that destroys while you're eating. It can actually create food allergies with certain foods because now your body associates something negative with that. And I just thought that was really interesting along with what you had just said on how our bodies respond and react to everything. So there again is that emotional component just kind of weaving its way through everything we do. So I love too that you said that your all of your six pillars are involved in every day of your life because already you've only gone through a few of them, but we can just now already see how every part of our life can really benefit from that as well. So that's, yeah. that's beautiful. So anyway, continue and tell us more. <laughs> okay. So then we have a uh, detoxification and the role of toxin. So this is, and this is an aspect that also goes back to our environment. We live in a world that has a lot more chemicals and toxins than ever before. And unfortunately we don't even know what all of what they all do to our body. But the ones that we do know about are pretty drastic. I mean, everything from hormone imbalances to promoting cancer and destroying our gut. And I mean, it just, the list goes on and on. And while I try not to scare people about it, we, we really do have to acknowledge that this just is the reality, but also know that there's a lot we can do. So we want to kind of take a twofold approach to this and this whole summit is digging into all of this. So I don't have to preach too much about it, but we have to one, make sure that we're reducing our exposure to toxins. Mm -hmm. And then two, we have to make sure that we're helping our body, supporting it in eliminating the toxins that we are exposed to. So that's kind of the twofold approach. And that is not only going to, um, so, affect gut health in terms of how well the guts the gut is functioning but the gut's also helping with detoxification so if it's not functioning properly then we're not helping our bodies detox so it's kind of the to the twofold approach there so next we have mindfulness and this really goes back to the psychology of it and what is our relationship with food with exercise with ourselves and what is what, what are our stress levels like are we taking time to, instead of saying reduce stress, I like to use the term transform stress because stress mm -hmm. is a type of like energy that we're holding. And how can we transform that into something else? And many of us don't have outlets for that. And we're carrying around a lot of stress. We're carrying around a lot of anxiety. We're carrying around unhealthy relationship with food or with exercise or with ourselves and if we don't acknowledge the role of the psychology and the mental health of it we are missing a huge huge component mm -hmm. to overall health and wellness and like you mentioned our mental state has a direct impact on our gut health because of that connection so then our sixth and final pillar is community. I hear people say again and again and again, it's, you know, I, I don't have the willpower or I don't have the self-control, especially when I worked in fitness. I mean, everyone's saying this, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just need someone to crack down on me. And my response is, that's actually not what's going on. You actually just, you don't have enough support and you don't have enough guidance. And at the end of the day, I want to encourage everyone listening, ask yourself, do you have someone in your life 
that you can truly talk to about your health and someone that you trust for guidance. Because if not, that becomes a very, very lonely journey. And none of us were meant to exist in any way alone. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to something as foundational as your health. And as you're thinking about, th there's many different types of support, right? You're, you're, if you're trying to make health behavior changes and your family's not supportive, that's going to be hard, right? So you just have kind of like that type of support, the emotional support. When it comes to guidance and, and a more tangible support like that, I really encourage people to not only make sure that whoever you're speaking with is knowledgeable in the space that you're seeking out, because we often, we, we go to our primary care for pretty much everything, mm -hmm. but doctors get about maybe 10 hours of nutrition education, often less. So mm -hmm. if you're going to your doctor wanting them to talk to you about nutrition, unless your doctor has some kind of special training and extra credentials and whatnot, that's not going to be the right person to talk to. So make sure that the, the type of support you're looking for, they're educated in, but they also come from a similar a similar perspective as you because if you're coming at it saying hey I have an infection what can I do naturally to help reduce this and they're saying here's antibiotics you're saying I'm uncomfortable with that and they say well that's all I can do right there, there's just a clash here mm -hmm. so if you're really valuing holistic health make sure that your provider has those same views as you so that you can be supported in the way that you deserve because you shouldn't just be told this is what you need to do for your health. You should really be presented with options and mm -hmm. saying, these are the things we could do. These are the, you could do, you know, antimicrobials, you could do this, you could do that, you could do, you know, and say, what would you like to do? And then I'm going to support you in that. Mm -hmm. And that's really key when it comes to that community aspect. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I mean, that's really, I don't know anybody who would not, embrace that if that was what they were offered and have had also clients who have communicated that they wish that it was more open like that. So it would be, it would definitely be a, a huge um, benefit to everybody for sure. So um, those are all really good pillars and definitely great things to think about and how we should really have all these different places or things in place as we're going through our healing process and how much stronger we can be through it with all of them in place. So that said, I would also like to kind of like maybe shift this a little bit and talk about pets because you have your, you have your, um, your pet program that you offer. Mm -hmm. And I would love to hear a little bit about that and share that with our guest as well. Yeah, absolutely. So in my private practice in holistic health and wellness, we, we do this deep dive. We do this digging. We find underlying root causes to create balance in the body using those six pillars. And I, I was, you know, I've, I've had my private practice for several years and, um, Several years into it, I met a uh, totally happenstance. I met a zoologist who comes in at the, she, when we met, I was telling her about my six pillars. She said, oh my gosh, I have eight pillars. And we like yeah. talked about it. We have the same pillars. I was like, wait a second, you do what I do, but for pets. And she was like, you do what I do, but for humans. And so we just totally geeked out over like this incredible overlap when it comes to living a healthy lifestyle. And I am a proud pet parent, as you can see, we have a kid here and I have two dogs. And so I just, I was like, okay, well, if nothing else, I need to pick your brain to, to help me with, with my pets because um, they were dealing with some health problems. And what I learned very quickly is the knowledge that I had about humans crossed over species lines into cats and dogs. And I realized that what I was doing to take care of myself, what I do to take care of my clients and patients, I could actually be doing for my pets. And I saw their health literally transform. Like, I mean, th that's not even an exaggerated word. Th their health literally transformed within a couple months of starting to integrate these practices. And so she and I were like, we have to do something with this because 
there are so many people doing it for themselves who don't realize they can do it for their pets. And at the same time, there's a lot of pet parents who will give anything and everything to their pets and aren't prioritizing their own health. And what better way than to bring these together? We already mm-hmm. know just the profound impacts that that the relationship has between a, a, a pet parent and, and, you know, their fur baby. Yes. But what better way to, to motivate and to make it sustainable than to do it together? Because sometimes these changes are hard, right? It, it, even if it's simple, it's not easy. So to have that, that again, that community component to move you forward is really key. So we came together and we created Pet and Parent Longevity, which is exactly what it sounds like. We support pet parents in creating a longevity lifestyle for themselves and their pets together so that they can both live long and healthy. Oh, I love that idea. I absolutely love it. Who does not love their pets? And like we were talking earlier, we've known people who will spend all this time doing everything for their pets, but now you have a way to bring that together. Because as you mentioned before, with Pillar 6 is having that community. Well, our pets are part of our community. And so now we can do both of those things together. And I can't imagine what that must feel like for a person who is doing both for themselves and their pet, because they get to see as they go along how their pet is feeling better. But the feeling that they give us on top of that, it's, there's, I don't know that there's anything that quite compares to that because it's a totally different level at which we connect with our pets. So I think that's a fabulous approach to health for both people and pets is to have that integrated together like that. That's beautiful. So, um, well, you have a couple of offers for our guests. So would you like to share those with them? Yeah, I love doing summit talks and sharing about this. And I know whenever I go to a summit, I always want to like, I want to learn more, right? When you hear, when you hear an interview or a talk or someone that resonates with you, it's like, okay, well now I'm, now I'm interested to learn more. What can I do next? So I have a couple resources for folks, just kind of depending on where their interest lies. So, um, if, so going back to the gut health bit, if you are someone who's been struggling with gut symptoms or right, in your gut or elsewhere in your body, going back to gut imbalances, and you feel like that conventional model has let you down and you've been told there's nothing you can do, manage your symptoms, I would be very happy to connect with you one-on-one. There's no cost for this. We can do a free 15-minute consultation, hear a little bit more about your journey, where you're at, and I can provide some insights just, again, from this more functional perspective. What might be some things that you could look at to, to uncover those root causes and provide balance so that you can be symptom free. So 15 minute consultation, Sherry, you'll share the the link for that. Yes. Yes. Yep. We'll have the link. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So then for pet parents who are like gut health, yeah, sure. But like, tell me how I can, you know, do this for myself and my pet together. Um, I have a, um, my, my co-founder pet and parent longevity, Penny, Penny and I have a quiz for you guys. And it will take you through the six pillars and you'll answer some questions about yourself and your pet. This is pretty in depth. Like this is, this is real stuff. This isn't like, you know, check yes or no three times. This is like really getting nitty gritty into your lifestyle, your pet's lifestyle. And then at the end, we'll give you some results to show you the overlap for the six pillars. How, how is each pillar either fostering or diminishing your health Mm -hmm. and the same for your pets? And you will likely find that there are areas where you're crushing it, but actually your pet's not doing so well. So I'm a perfect example of this. I was doing amazing with, you know, my nutrition. I'm a dietitian, but then I realized like, oh, I'm actually not nourishing my pets in the way that that they need to be. So you'll, you'll get, um, kind of a score for both your side and for your pet side. If you have multiple pets, then you can kind of do, they get multiple times and and see, and it'll Mm -hmm. give you kind of a roadmap moving forward because the, the pillars are, a guide. They're a framework. Mm-hmm. If you're already, if you have a few areas of your life where 
you're crushing it and you're really fostering your health by the way you eat and the way you sleep, but you're not exercising and your detoxification routines aren't great, then you know where to focus. And it helps you create an individualized roadmap. Instead of saying, these are all the things you need to do, you can get really narrow focused so that you can take what I call the lowest hanging fruit, right? You can do the mm. things that are going to have the biggest payoff for you and your pet's health. So we'll share the link for that quiz. Um, and if you take the quiz, you're also going to be entered into a raffle into the Pet and Parent Longevity membership called Rejuvenate. Each month in our membership, we provide resources around a specific health topic. We actually just a couple months ago did gut health. So it's gut health for you oh and your pets. We did um, dental care for you and your pet. So each month we dive into a different category and give you resources and support for you and your pet. So you'll be entered to win a three month free membership um, and to rejuvenate if you take the quiz. Oh, that is beautiful. I love that. Having topics each month where you get to focus on one thing. I can think, right, we have a, um, a 10 month old Pyrenees and trying to get him to open his mouth to brush his teeth. <laughs> that is fun, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> so that, that sounds so ideal. And how often, especially like when it comes to dental, you know, for our pets, those are just some of the things that people have a hard time doing. So to learn ways that we can do that, that's such a great idea. I love it. So, well, wonderful. Well, all right. So, all right. To all our guests, you now have some great opportunities here to join in for yourself or your pets or for both of you together. Um, I hope you take advantage of it. It, it sounds absolutely fabulous. So, but um, thank you, Katie, for spending time with us and sharing what you do. It sounds like you have this amazing way of looking at things. I loved your analogies. I think it really helps people to understand, you know, the gut health and how antibiotics work on us um, and the significant effect that they play on our lives. But anyway, so thank you so much for taking the time to share with us what you do both for people and for pets. And um, we'll have all the links in the email with the video so that people can connect with you. So wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Sherry. And thank you so much for what you're doing and, and putting on this summit. It is such an important topic and education is key. And I just want to kind of leave folks with, with a final like tip as you're listening to all the information, because you're going to get so much information from all these mm -hmm. incredible speakers this week. Don't sit in the information overwhelm because you don't have to do everything at once and you don't need to just yeah. pick one or two things to start, put it all in your brain, right? Get the recordings if you can. So you have that there, but just start with small steps. That is really the key. If you do one thing for yourself, if one thing for your pet after listening to this talk, that lays the foundation for which you can then add more and more and more on top. Oh, absolutely. So. That's such great advice. Don't go into overwhelm for sure. Yes. I love that. Good. Thank you. So. All right, Sherry. Well, thank uh, you so much. Yes. Well, thank you. And we hope that you continue to watch all of these videos and enjoy all of our amazing speakers.